some of you are getting this. Because when your back is up against the wall and Satan says, I've got you right where I want you, it is when at that very single moment, when you just look up to heaven, that he will deliver you, that he will deliver you right on time. Second verse. All right, it's time to begin. Sunday morning, we hope that you come ready to worship the Lord. Amen. Did you purpose in your heart to give Him all that you got today? Amen. You know, he, he deserves all of your praises. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of all of your worship. And you know what? True worship in spirit and truth is that which comes from the heart. That you give, you tell God that you're thankful for what God has done for you. You're thankful for what God, that you're believing that God's going to continue to do for you. And I hope that's in your heart today. And I want you to get in and receive from Him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just invite the presence of the Lord uh, to do what only He can do. Because without Him, well, it's all a waste of time. Right. Heavenly Father, we love You and we thank You, God, for this opportunity one more time to be in Your house, to be with Your people. I thank you, God, again for everyone that is here, every, every man, woman, boy, and girl. And I ask you, Lord, to reach down. Let the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit move upon this congregation. God, meet the needs of every person, Lord, and accept our praises as we endeavor to lift up the name of Jesus. We ask it all in his name. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's worship him this morning. Oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all Lord, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout to the glory. See, while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will over. Spread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see my Jesus, we'll sing and shout before Before us, soon his beauty will be home. Soon those pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see my Jesus. We'll sing and shout victory. Picture it when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be home soon those burly 
Amen. Grateful for Jesus Christ today. Well, Jesus has gone away to prepare for me a place. He has built for me a home beyond the sky. And I'll be ready for that day when my soul shall fly away. To that mansion waiting over on the other side. Well, and the only thing better than talk, talking about it is when I walk those streets of gold and I wear my heart on my road. I'm gonna meet my Lord and Savior at that feet in the air. Ain't made of pearl, ain't nothing like it in this world, and those foundations, they are made of precious stone, well, and finally on that day, I see my Savior face to face, I'm gonna lift my head, shout around that road. made of pearl ain't nothing like it in this world see those foundations they are made of precious stone well and finally on that day i'll see my savior face to face i'm gonna lift my head shout around his throne oh, well and the It's gonna sail away, oh, get on the gospel ship. It's gonna sail away, oh, get on the gospel ship. It's gonna sail away, it just might be leaving here to go. Get on that gospel ship, hey, get on the gospel ship.
Come on, church. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ushers, would you come at this time? We're going to receive a tithe and offering that supports the ministry of this church. Give as given unto the Lord this morning. And God will bless you for that. Praise the Lord. Bow your heads and your hearts again. Father, we worship you this morning in giving. We give back to you, God. We give back to you, Lord, the small portion that you have trusted unto us. And I ask you to bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was dreaming last night. and When I woke up, this is a song that I was singing in my dream. And I had it on my mind so strong. It's one that we do pretty often. But I got to do it this morning. Amen. Well, a lame man was sitting outside of the gate begging arms of those who entered in. Well, as Peter and John, they came upon him, the lame man expected from them. Well, now Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such I have I give unto thee. Well, right in the Spirit touched him, many leaves to feed his head. Look what he's done for me. Well, now look what my Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. See, he saved me. It was just in time. I know the praise is there. For he stays just the same. Come on, let's praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, I was bound by chain of darkness and sin. I had no hope, no peace of mind. See, all my sins were red as scarlet. They washed in white as snow. Then he opened up my blinded eyes. I made him my choice. I've got joy, peace, everything within. See, my name is written down in that land. So well, I can't you see what he's done for me. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. By chains of darkness and sin, and I had no hope, no peace of mind. All my sins were red as scarlet, but He washed them white as snow. Then He opened up my blinded eyes. Well, my soul will rejoice, and I made Him my choice. I've got joy, peace, and everything there. See, my name is written down in that land for God's life. Can't you see what he's done for me? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I know the praise is there. He's just the same. Come on, let's praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, now look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, worship Him this morning. 
I don't know if you realize it or not, but God's still bigger than cancer. God's still bigger than drugs. He's still bigger than alcohol. He's still bigger than depression. I could go on and on. You see, I don't know what everybody's going through. Maybe somebody's watching live this morning. But we are compassed by a lot of witnesses this morning that know that can testify of what God is able to do. What God is able to deliver those from. This is the time I usually do announcements. But let me go ahead and make this announcement. God still delivers. There's nothing too hard for God. Come on, let's look, look around. You'll see what God can do. You'll know what He can do. Let Him change your life this morning. I was bound by chains of darkness and sin And I had no hope, no peace of mind All my sins were red as scarlet But He washed them white as snow He opened up my blinded eyes You see, my soul will rejoice since I made Him my choice I've got joy, peace, and everything then See, my name is rich man in that land for the life, can't you see what he does for me? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise his name. For he saved him this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. My, it's just good to be in church. It's good to be in God's presence this morning. I don't know of any other place I'd rather be. Amen. I want to say again, we just welcome each and every one of you uh, for being here. We still got some that are out on vacation. It is vacation time, and uh, so uh, keep them in your prayers as well, but we welcome our home folk, our visitors alike, and I want our home folk to give our visitors a hand this morning, and we just appreciate you so much for being here. We're, we're, just, we're just honored to have each and every one of you here this morning. In way of announcements, let me make uh, this, that uh, this afternoon at 345, uh, choir is having practice, so if you're in the church choir, you need to be here at 345. And uh, they're going to go over a song, so uh, get with mom if you have any questions about that. Also, uh, right around the corner, it'll be next month, if we need you to be praying, uh, make it on your, write it down in your calendar, uh, however that you need to do it. But Brother Larson is coming to town. And we're always blessed when he comes. We're looking forward to Brother Larson coming for a weekend revival. He'll be here August 13th, 14th, and 15th. Now, it's going to be a little different this year. Normally, uh, we have uh, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. We will not be doing a Sunday evening service. Brother Larson has to get back uh, uh, back to the ministry, so uh, he'll not be staying for Sunday night service. But what we are doing, uh, we are doing a 10 o'clock Saturday morning teaching session. You don't want to miss out on this. Amen. It's going to be a great, great blessing. And uh, so we're going to be Friday night at 7 o'clock, Saturday morning at 10, and, of course, uh, Saturday night at 7, and, of course, uh, 
Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock as normal service, and we will dismiss our, our Sunday evening service uh, that weekend as well. But 13th, 14th, and 15th of August, uh, that's, well, it's less than a month away. Make plans to attend. Be praying for that revival and also invite somebody to come to be with you uh, during uh, that revival. All right. Now, I want Brother Jeff, Sister Megan to come, Melissa to come. We got something special. Where's Kadem at? Kadem? Come up here, buddy. Me and Kadem's got something in common. We don't slam dunk. But this buddy right here, he's, he's all heart. He's a good boy. We appreciate him so much. But Kadem had a birthday. Melissa don't want to turn loose of him. But he's jumping over to the teen class. Kaden, this is your new pastors, your, your youth pastors right here. And we were so proud of him stepping up, growing up. He's in good hands. He's in good hands. We appreciate you, buddy. We do very much, and we thank you so much. And happy birthday to you, man. All right, give him a hand again. Thank you, Lord. All right. Hey, our kids are growing up. And they go from one class to the next. But you know what's unique about Faith Worship Center? They go from one class to the next. It doesn't matter if they're beginners and they go into the children's church and they go into the teen class and then when they go into the adult class, guess what? They hear the same message. Hey, they hear the same message. And we're thankful for that. And uh, I'm thankful for the unity, for the love that we have. And our, our teachers, they do a great, great job instilling in their kids and I can assure you, when they go to children's church, they're not getting cookie and the Kool-Aid. They're getting the Word. They're getting the Word. And, and we're thankful for that. We're investing in our kids. And uh, it's just, uh, just an honor uh, to be able to do that. All right. Wednesday night, last Wednesday night, we had a, a panel uh, study. We're going to pick back up this Wednesday night. I guess we're going to go back into Bible study. Uh, Bible study Wednesday night. And uh, so adults are going to uh, meet. Uh, and we'll have our class, and then, of course, the teens, uh, children's church and primary is going to meet over in the gym at 7 o'clock uh, Wednesday night. So if you can, come and be a part of our Wednesday evening or midweek Bible study service. You need it. You need teaching. We're going to invest in your Christian walk. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to live for God. Anybody got some questions sometimes about how to live for God? Hey, we're going to answer those questions. We're going to show you how. And uh, give us a chance to do that. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to pick back up with that. And then, of course, tonight, uh, prayer meeting at 4.30, service at 5 o'clock. Come expecting to receive from the Lord, and you'll be blessed, I know, indeed. All right. Sister Tiffany, would you come? She has asked to sing this morning. We're going to let her do that. And, uh, but, no, she's going to bless you. She really does. We, we enjoy her, her singing and just does a phenomenal job. Just to find that 
God and Isaac standing in God's way. But on this altar you can prove it's not your Isaac he wants, he's wanting you. blessing my what a blessing my you know Jesus didn't die just to deliver us from sin but also from ourselves hey there's so many times I've had issues in my life and really all I had to do was look in the mirror brother Mike self was in the way and uh, my 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 praise I ble- appreciate that song what a blessing it is we're going to dismiss our children to go to children's church at this time our primary class as well and they're going to go to children's church going to go to the Lord in prayer as we do on Sunday mornings and 
Maybe you're here this morning, you need a touch in your body. Jesus is still a healer. He's still able to heal. He's still able to heal. Jesus already paid the price to pay for our healing. And we believe that this morning. And we're going to take these knees to the Lord and ask God to touch and ask God to, to heal the physical body this morning. And would you come? Would you bring your knee to the Lord? Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. My, my, my. Church family, would you come at this time and help us? Yes. That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted Lord you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit lives within me because you died and rose amazing love his amazing love today if anyone else knew all the thoughts all the things that go through your mind 
the many times that you've blasphemed the Lord, the many times that you think bad about someone else, like the Lord knows, they would have quit you a long time ago. Amen? No one else is going to hang on like the Lord does. He's just going to stand right there by your side, leading you and guiding you every step of the way. Amen. And I'm thankful today for His amazing love. Oh, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me. Because you died and rose See, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Lord, I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. How can it be? Oh, that you, my King, would die for me. Can you just close your eyes, maybe lift your hands, and let's just thank Him for His love just for a second. Father, we're thankful this morning. You loved us, God, when we were unlovable. Loved us while we were still yet a sinner. And this morning, we thank You for that, God. And we give You glory, and we give You praise for everything that You've done, Lord, to bring us back into relationship with You. If it was not for Your love, God, where would we be this morning? And we thank You for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, singers and musicians, for your help this morning. Well, again, I want to say welcome to each and every person that's here, and God bless you so much for coming and being faithful to the house of the Lord and our, our, our visitors. We thank you for stopping by. I know Pastor Brian has already made mention, but i got to say it also. There's not another church that exists that is more honored to have you as their guest this morning, and I mean that. And we thank you so much for coming and being uh, faithful to the house of the Lord. I'm going to get right into the Word. I, I, I've enjoyed my study this week, and I hope to share that with you today. But I want you to turn with me this morning to a very familiar text to the church, and that is Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter number 11. And we'll look at verses number 28, 29, and also verse number 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and verse number 30. It is the words of Christ, the teachings of Christ. And I think that it will be helpful. I'm going to try to slow down, teach a little bit this morning. I want to make this text to, to come alive, be a visual to you, and, uh, and hope that we can give you something that you can take home and apply it to your life. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and verse number 30. Jesus would say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, 
and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And I'll read verse 28 one more time. Come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This morning, I want to minister for just a moment on the thought, come and find rest. Come and find rest. Will you bow your head and will you help me pray this morning? Father, we love you. We thank you, God, again for the opportunity to be here, Lord. God, the praise and worship has been wonderful this morning to usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for your presence, your, your spirit that we already feel today, God. And we just ask that you would open our ears to properly hear, our hearts to receive. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint me, help me, God, to rightly divide this great word of truth, Lord. And I'll be very careful to give you all of the praise, the glory, and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody says, Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get my water and we won't have no dry preaching this morning. <coughs> The setting here in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 28, if we was to back up to the beginning of this chapter, we'll find out that in regards to the ministry of Christ, that Jesus is already making quite a ruckus with the religious people. Every move that he made, everything that he taught, everything that he done, was disapproved by the religious leaders, or I'm going to say it like this because it's what we have today, by the religious monitors of that day. Any reason that they could find to disapprove or uh, uh, by the religious leaders of that day, any reason that they could find that pro to prove that he was blaspheming or they thought they could prove or that he was a fraud is something that they would capitalize on. I want you to understand that in regards to the ministry of Christ, I have had thoughts before my own self that sometimes ministry is difficult. But my ministry difficulties doesn't compare to what Jesus went through. Everywhere that he turned, everything that he faced was somebody trying to tear him down and to quieten his voice uh, and the work that he was doing for God the Father. Every attempt that they tried to stop him and to shut him up always ended in a great failure and it always ended uh, actually revealing to everybody, the multitude that was there, just how wrong they truly was. The truth will always shed light upon the darkness and when you preach and teach the truth, it will always reveal any error or anything that is wrong and that should be a lesson to us today. If I backed up a little bit further and we looked at the beginning of his ministry as Matthew would record it in chapter 4, chapter number 5, when we get to looking at this, we already see that by now Jesus has already called all 12 of his disciples. We see that by now that he has taught on things that, how that he would fulfill the law. He taught on things such as adultery and he taught on things such as murder. He has already begun to point them to their heart they would say the law says if you lie with another man's wife then you are guilty of adultery and Jesus would say I say unto you though if you've even had the thought then you have committed it already in your heart he's starting to bring in the revelation bringing them from law to the teaching of grace or the working of the Holy Spirit by now as, as it was a, a problem in their heart he has already taught on the correct way to pray he has taught taught on giving. He has taught on fasting. He has taught on judging uh, the fundamental teachings of every believer and every believer needs to know these fundamental beliefs. And then they really make some angry in chapter 8 and chapter number 9. By the time that he gets there, he's already healed the leper. The centurion's son, the centurion come to him, who his son, he said, is now dead. And the Lord says, go back to your home. Your son is not dead. He has raised up Peter's mother-in-law. He he has cast out demon spirits. He has stilled the storm by now already. He has healed the paralyzed man. The woman with the issue of blood has came through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. We find that the blind man could see. 
The deaf man could hear. The paralyzed man was running. The dumb man could speak. All of these things. I want you to know Jesus was troubling their city. Jesus was troubling their city. And I like how the gospel, I believe it's John, records how the Herod sent a servant. And he said, I want you to go down and find this man, Jesus, and I want you to tell him uh, to quit casting out demons in, the, in, in his name. And Jesus used that same servant, and he sent him right back to Herod. And he said, you go tell that fox uh, that today he'll find me casting out demons, uh, and tomorrow I will cast out demons, uh, and the next day I will heal, I will deliver and I will set free he would not be silenced he would not be stopped he continued about the work that God the Father sent him to do they were angry but when you think about it as they were angry I'm stirred this morning Pastor Brian already may mention I promise you he hadn't seen my notes there's a new song that's being sung, and, and I like it. I don't know if you like it or not, but I like it. When a young girl says, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you know my Bible tells me that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? I may be a little old-fashioned, and some would say, oh, those times has already passed. If those times have already passed, then Jesus has changed. But my Bible says he is God, and he changes not. I want you to know this morning, of all of the things we read about, he's still able to do today. Yes, he can open deaf ears. Yes, he can open blind eyes. Yes, he can deliver you from crystal methamphetamine. Yes, he's greater than alcohol. Yes, he can restore your family. Oh, I hope somebody's getting this this morning. He's the same. He's not changed. What he done then, he can still do today. He can still do it today. It's not by accident that right after if we was to move on in chapter number 10, Right after all of these things happened, a great multitude was gathering around. They had watched him do all of these great works. I promise you, I'll get to my text in just a moment. But right after they seen him do all these great works, there was a great multitude, a, a great crowd that began to throng him. When he got this crowd all the way around him, a mixed crowd, there was the people that held to the law. There was the religious leaders. There was the, 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 the Gentile. There were those broken, sick, hurting that was all the way around him. He had done on all of these great works uh, John said uh, I may not have emphasized I want to paraphrase I may not have emphasized uh, on the healings of Jesus Christ uh, but I want everybody to know as he ended his books uh, that the world itself could not contain the books to be written uh, if everything was recorded uh, but as he got this multitude around Jesus said listen uh, the harvest is plenty but the workers are few I've already done a great work uh, I've touched a lot of people deliver but there's still much work to be done and that ought to echo in the heart of every believer today listen there is still more souls to be reached for the kingdom of God there's still those that are broken still those that are hurting there are still those that are lost today still those that are bound and as a church we must be like John and be a voice that is crying in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord and to point people to Jesus Christ. Chapter 10 and chapter number 11, he drew a crowd. Some were angry. Some were ecstatic. Some were rejoicing. Some were just staring at all, thinking, what in the world is he going to do next? I don't know how he could top anything that he'd already done. But in our text, the multitude is there. But with them is the religious leaders of the religious monitors of that day trying to pick Jesus apart. Jesus had already gone against everything just about that they, were, that they had taught everything. Not that he had gone against it, but they already fulfilled everything in a way that they was not expecting it. He was not exalting their law. He was teaching how that their law pointed to him. He wasn't holding to the religious ceremony. He was teaching how every ceremony pointed to him. He wasn't pointing uh, uh, to some other man or another prophet. He was pointing to himself as the Christ. 
as the Messiah, as the one the law spoke of, as the one they should be looking for, uh, as the Savior of the world, uh, as Emmanuel, as the root and the offspring of David. Uh, he's trying to get their attention and tell them, look to me. Uh, I am the horn of your salvation. Uh, I'm the first, I'm the last. Uh, I, am, uh, the, the, I am the bright and the morning star. He's trying to get them to look to him. And they were still trying to look to their law. But in our text, as this multitude gathered around, I want to tell you this morning, he pointed them to him as the Christ. But if we truly point to Christ, it will tear down religion. And if you truly point to Christ, I'm going to be kind this morning, but I want to tell you, religion people will get angry at you. They don't want to hear that you're not saved. By your water baptism formula. We got quiet this morning. If we got some religion here this morning, I'm going to ruffle your feathers just a little bit. They don't want to hear that salvation doesn't come through church membership. They don't want to hear that you got to do this, this, and this, or you're not right with God. But Jesus said, look to me. Come unto me. Religion will get angry. Religion. And I'll, I'll just be straight. Sometimes you're going to lose friends in the church world either. Even in the church world, you will lose friends. Those that you thought would stick beside you. But because you don't believe like they believe, well, we can't be friends any longer. Well, I'm preaching good. We're quiet. But I want you to understand this morning, religion and relationship is like oil and water. They don't mix. You'll either hold to religion or you'll have a relationship with Christ, but you can't have both. You can't have both. Religion will get you nowhere. Relationship with Christ will get you smack dab in the will of God. That's what we want. That's where we want to be. But to a mixed multitude, and I'm coming back to our text, he begins to stand and announce, and I want to do my best to teach this this morning. Because I want you to understand this text this morning. He begins to stand and to announce. Come unto me. All of you. That labor. And are heavy laden. And I. Will give you rest. He said this to the religious folks. He said this to those that were the Gentile world. He said it to the Jews. He said it to everybody that was there. Come unto me. All of you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The announcement first come, and this is the first recorded invitation by Jesus Christ to the entire multitude. The first recorded invitation was this, come to me. I don't mean to be unkind, but not to just your church, not just to a denomination, not just to a prophet. And I know there's a lot of people teaching today, and I'm going to bust a bubble that is saying, come to me, I'm a prophet. Come to me, I'm an apostle. Come to me, I'm a pastor. No, sir. The Bible says we ought to lift up Jesus Christ. And if he's lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. I get sick of teaching that is pointing to a man. I get sick of preaching and teaching that people boast and say, I've got a healing ministry. I've got this ministry. I've got that ministry. I want you to know this morning, outside of Jesus Christ, you don't have anything. And if you're not pointing to Jesus, whatever you have is not of him. You've allowed it to puff you up. You've allowed it to build yourself up when the gospel should tear us down and humble us to a place that we say, not me, but it's him. Not me, but it's that. Not me. And not what I've done, but what Jesus has already done. I wish people, I'm sorry, I'm making a detour and I'm trying to be kind. But I want you to know, there's a lot of the church world today that could take a lesson from John. They come to John, are you the light? No, I'm not the light. Yeah, but ain't you the Christ? No, sir, I am not the Christ. John could have easily stood on the bank of that river and said, yes, I'm the one you've been looking for. But he said, no, I want you to know where I stand with the Lord. I'm not even worthy to bend over and to unlatch his shoes. We got men and women trying to build their self up today instead of building up Christ. No wonder we got the church in such a mess. 
I'll get back to where I'm at. Come unto me, Jesus meant only me, because he's still the answer for the broken, for those that are bound, those that are depressed, those that need a healing, those that are hurting. We've got to point them to Jesus. We've got to point them to Jesus. And then he says this, and I'll go through these texts slowly. Come unto me all. Who did he leave out in that call? He didn't leave anybody out. And here's the amazing thing about that. Jesus knows you better than he than you know yourself. He knows where I've been. I'm going to pick on myself a little bit. He knows where I've been. He knows the things that I've said. He knows the thoughts that I've had. He knows the mess that I've got myself into. He knows the deep, dark secrets of my heart that nobody else knows. Oh, Jesus knows. I don't got nothing hid from Him. I stand bare naked before the Lord with nothing hid. And you know what He done? He said, you, yes, you, come unto me. I don't care about your problem. I don't care about your circumstance. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I said all. You are welcome to come to Christ. Come to me all. And then he says, yes, you. All of you that labor, when we look at labor, he's talking here specifically about spiritually laboring, trying within self-efforts to accomplish what only God can do. Trying to save somebody yourself. Trying to change yourself. Trying to help yourself be a better person. He's talking to them. All you, look, all you're going to do is labor. All you're going to do is labor. And Jesus is saying, look, there's a lot of people in that multitude. There's a lot of y'all that's laboring. And when you get tired of laboring, if you'll come to me, I'll do what you can't do, and here's what I'll do also. Not only will I help you, I'll give you rest from all of your labor. Oh, that was good. I liked that better than they did, but that was good. And then he said this, labor and heavy laden. The word heavy laden here means to overburden with ceremony or religious works. Christ is dealing with religious acts along with self-works. Both are equally burdensome. Both are equally burdensome. But he says, all of you that labor and are heavy laden. And let me tell you this. Both equally availeth nothing. They don't avail nothing with the Lord. My own self-effort, my own self-work, they don't avail anything with God. He says, come unto me, all of you that labor and are heavy laden. And watch this, I, Jesus, pointing to Christ. I could go back to it, but I feel I made my point. The job of the pastor, the preacher, there are those that are called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists. I'm not making light of that. I know God's calling. But I don't care what their calling is. If it's a layman, our job is to point people to Jesus. It's to point people, not a prophet, not an apostle. I don't want to be in a service. Pastor Brian talked about a service. Come up here if you want some of this man's anointing or you want some of this man's anointing. I don't want a man's anointing. I want the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I want what God can do. And he says, I will give. Look, look at that. I'm going to give. You know what? That literally, it literally means I'm going to place in your possession something that you didn't earn, something that you didn't work for, something that you didn't buy, something that you didn't merit. Something that you didn't read enough for, something that you didn't pray enough for, something that you didn't uh, confess enough for, if you will just come to me by faith from the heart, I'm going to give, I'm going to place something in your possession that you could have never received on your own. Praise the Lord. That's good. And this is what he says he's going to give. Rest. And that literally means this. When it says rest, I'm going to bring all of your self-efforts and all of your self-works to an end. That's, right. That's good. I thought about shouting, but it was pretty quiet, so I backed off. That was good. He said, I'm going to bring all of your self-works to an end. This is, where they, this is where they stop. Because if you'll come to me, I'm going to give you rest. Verse number 19, please. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest, the second time that we see that word, in your souls or your innermost being. Let's break this down real quickly, if I, 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 if I, if I may. When he talks about yoking, he's talking about the, the word yoke literally means to couple with. I'm going to couple myself with Christ. I'm going to be in a yoke. The, the, the type here is as the old oxen, but I'm going to couple myself with Jesus Christ. I want to illustrate that in just a second. He said, learn of me. In other words, understand what I have provided. Understand the reason that I've come. Understand the reason that I could announce it is finished on the cross of Calvary. Understand that there's nothing you need to do or that you can do outside of placing faith in me and what I've already done in order to receive the rest that God will give you afforded by my finished work upon the cross. He said, learn of me. You know what we're doing? We're learning of a lot of different things. Instead of learning of Christ, we need to learn of Christ, learn of me. And he says, I'm meek and lowly. The only two things that the Lord ever said about himself. The word meek and lowly it literally means meek and lowly in heart. That his core character, get this, his core character to mankind is that he is meek and that he's lonely, lowly. That he is gentle and that he is humble as a servant. Well, that's good. The character of Christ is to freely give as a servant the things that we lost in the fall. Well, what did we lose in the fall? We lost everything. We fell out of relationship with God. We lost everything. We were separated from God. Guaranteed to spend eternity, uh, eternally separated from God. We lost everything in the fall. The character of Christ is to freely give as a servant the things that we lost in the fall. As a servant, he had to give us some things. Now, he's a servant. I know I've picked on him before, but I'm going to pick on him again this morning. Brother Troy has as much of a servant's heart as anybody that I've ever been around, and I mean that. He really does. There's others that I can pick at, but I've worked with Brother Troy quite a bit, and he has a servant's heart. We're trying to work together. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that ladder. Brother Troy says, I'll get it. I'll do it. Man, we gotta, we got to finish painting this door over here. I'll do it. I need to go truck, see if I can find her. I got one. I'll go get it. I mean, you announce something that's got to be done, and I promise I've never took advantage of that. <laughs> but everything that you say, I'll do it. I'll get it. That's a servant. I'll do it. I'll get it. I'll do it. You're thinking, Brother Troy, calm down. I'm going to call Miss Stacy and have her to bring you down a little bit. And... Okay, y'all get that later. He's got a servant's heart. Jesus said, I was a servant. I'm just playing in my mind, paraphrasing. Don't try to find it in the Bible, but I'm thinking as a servant. The book of Mark will depict Christ as a servant. That's what Mark did. And when we look at there as a servant, I got to think that one day that when God, when, we, when man was separated from God, and we were taken out of relationship. It took a blood sacrifice, Brother Charles. It took somebody dying in order to bring us back into relationship. And if God, I said if God, I'm coming from the book of Steve. I'm just playing with my thoughts here just a little bit. But if God was in heaven and saying, well, we are separated from mankind. I don't want to be separated from mankind. Somebody's going to have to bring them back in relationship with us. I can't help but to think that Jesus said, I'll do it. Yeah, but somebody's going to have to go down to that dusty earth. I'll do it. Somebody's going to have to go by the whipping pole. I'll do it. Somebody's going to have to bear all of their transgressions. I'll do it. Somebody's going to have to be beat. I'll do it. Somebody will be mocked. Somebody will be ridiculed. Jesus says, I'll do it. Somebody's going to have to carry a cross up Galgotha's hill. I'll do it. Somebody's going to wear a crown of thorns. I'll do it. Somebody's going to have to die, be dead, and buried, and raised again. And Jesus says, I will do it. I will serve mankind and give them eternal life. I'll do it. Jesus said, I'll do it. And he came. And he didn't owe us that. But he came anyway. When he came, the character of Christ, he said this, 
You shall find. Another word, guarantee. I want you to know this morning, of course, I'm going to give an altar call for those that have been weary and heavy laden, those that have labored and heavy laden. I want you to know this morning, I'm not giving an altar call for you to come and to maybe find rest for your souls. This altar call is not a chance. This altar call is not uh, that something might or might not change. Uh, I'm depending upon the Word of God and the words of Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, You don't have to come down wondering if. uh, You need to know this morning uh, that Jesus said, You shall find. Uh, You shall find. Uh, It's a guarantee. Uh, If you come to the Lord by faith uh, in Jesus and what He did on the cross of Calvary, you shall find rest for your soul to guarantee rest I love this word rest it literally means recreation I'm going from a simple strong's if you want to go home and check me and I invite you to do that a simple strong's but it means recreation you know what the word recreation means recreation literally done it means activity done for enjoyment when one is not working Activity done for enjoyment when one is not working. (laughs) I'm liking this a whole lot better. I thought y'all would like it as much as me. Activity done for enjoyment. I've heard people say it, but I got to tell you this wrong. I've heard people saying that, uh, uh, that living for God is miserable. Living for God is hard. We got a thought of faith. I'm not going to deny that. But living for the Lord is not miserable. Living for God is not hard. I'm not no different than the unbeliever in regards to being exempt from the trials and troubles of this life. But I want to tell you this morning, living for the Lord uh, is not something that brings sorrow. Living for God uh, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. (laughs) It's something that only your only regret is accepting Him a long time ago. When you live for the Lord by faith, We live a recreation time, activity done for enjoyment. Living for God really is a good life. Living a good life is living for Jesus because you got a place to go and you've got a peace in your heart that the world cannot give you. And he said you find rest for your souls, the inner man, the spirit man, the man that feels will find rest. I back up and then I'm going to move to verse number 20. Brother Troy, I'd already picked on you. Can you come help me? He says this, take my yoke. It literally means, put your arm around me somehow. Yoke together. We're yoked together. When they take two oxen, they yoke them together. They're pulling the same plow. But when I'm yoked with the Lord, here's what I want, I want to turn south. Here's what I want you to see. The Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And when we look at the character of Christ, Literally, in the things in my life, if I will trust in the Lord, pulling that plow or pulling the weight of life, as we take a step, the Lord is always a step ahead of me. I'm not really pulling a whole lot. I'm just stepping by faith, and Jesus is carrying everything that I'm having to carry. As long as I'll stay coupled with Jesus, uh, and he stays one head, uh, we may be a little cockeyed here, but I'm not feeling the weight like he's feeling it. Uh, I'm not having to work like he's having to work. Uh, I'm not having to do what he's having to do. I'm dependent upon his strength. I'm just walking by faith, uh, and as long as I'll take a step by faith, yoked together with him, I want you to know uh, you will find that his burden is light and you will find rest for your soul. Got to tell you this. Now listen to me. It's not hard to yoke together with somebody that's going to do everything for you. It's not difficult to yoke together with somebody that's going to pull the plow for you. I've seen a video of a guy, he had the work clothes on, he had the work vest on, he even had the helmet on. He's literally running around like this right here. Somebody would pick something up and he would go through the motions and follow him over there. And he, do, he didn't do a single thing. He didn't do nothing but move a whole lot. He was in the picture. He had all of the, the, the helmet and all of the work clothes on, but he wasn't dirty. He, he didn't do anything. I want you to know that job wouldn't be hard to work. That would be an easy job to do. 
All you got to do, go there, and wait for lunchtime, and then wait for time to go home, and you really didn't do anything. I want you to know all Jesus requires, if you will couple with him, is to walk by faith. Be yoked together with him. Walk by faith. Listen to what I am about to say. He will carry the load. He will bear your broken heart. He will deal with the issues. As they said in the Old Testament, Jesus said, or the Lord said, I am the Lord thy God. I will fight for you. Only be strong and have courage and go forward in me. And if we will walk by faith and be coupled with the Lord, it's not hard to couple with somebody that's going to do everything. We just got to walk by faith. In verse number 20, he says this, my yoke is easy. (laughs) Absolutely easy. My yoke is easy. Just be yoked with him, coupled together with him. Yoke, being coupled with somebody. It's not hard to join yourself with somebody that will serve you if we will just believe upon him. And then he says this, my burden is light. Literally meaning the service to the Lord is is easy. All that he requires is faith. Proper faith will produce proper works where much of the church is trying to claim faith by their works and by what they do, can I just tell you again this morning something that you already know? It's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus has done for you. And if you will believe upon him, the Holy Spirit little by little will transform your life exactly like it's supposed to be. Living for God is not a list of rules and regulations. Living for God is not a list of rules and regulations. Living for God is not a dress code. Yes, the Bible teaches modesty, but you're not holy because of what you wear. I'm preaching good. Living for God is not rules and regulations. It's relationship with Jesus. And when you come into relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit will little by little line your heart up as it is supposed to be. Everybody that he was teaching to was either yoked to their self or yoked to the old law, to religion. It's not coincidental that he would say, come and find rest because if you're yoked to law or you're yoked to yourself, then my friend, I don't even know you, but I can tell you this, that you're labor and you're heavy laden. You are heavy laden. You are war slap out. They thought, again, I'm going to be kind, but I want to teach the scripture. If we was to read on to the next chapter, they thought that the rest was in a day. It was in the Sabbath day. And Jesus would say, Matthew, if we went on to chapter 12, verse 8, that the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath day also. He's even the Lord of the Sabbath. They thought their day was in a rest. But the Sabbath day was only meant to be a type of what Jesus would fulfill and complete right here in what he's teaching. Come to me. Not a day. Come to me and you shall find rest for your souls. We find that in the scripture they defended the Sabbath day tooth and nail. Do you notice they defend Sabbath probably as much or more than any of the rest of them? They defend it as much or more uh, than, than what the rest of them are. Why was that? Because the Sabbath was a visual. They know if you didn't go to the synagogue on Saturday, but they didn't know if you were covenanting your neighbor's wife. I'm preaching good. They know if you wasn't in the synagogue, but they don't know if last Tuesday you told a little white lie. And so it was a look at me, look at me. Oh, I was, I was here on the Sabbath day. They went as far as to say, Jesus, did you know your disciples picked corn on the Sabbath day? <sighs> Jesus said, well, they were hungry. Yeah, but it was the Sabbath day. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I don't leave a day out when it comes to eating. Unless the Lord put it on me to fast, I'm not, look, uh-uh going to happen. Somebody says, hey man, we'd like to go eat sometime. That's an easy appointment to make with me. 
because it's going to happen. I'm going to do it. But as they're talking about the Sabbath day, and Jesus said, my disciples were hungry. Yeah, but it was the Sabbath. He said, did you not know that David and his men, when they were faint, they eat showbread out of the tabernacle. They eat the showbread on the table out of the tabernacle. And God didn't strike them dead. You know why? Because it wasn't about the religious ceremony and the religious law. It was about them coming to Jesus. Nobody. They defended it more than anyway. That was a favorite to them. It was a favorite to them to keep the Sabbath because it was the day that they got to sit back in the easy chair and do absolutely nothing. And here's why Jesus brought it about. First of all, to reveal that they were defending the Sabbath so hard because it was a visual and something they could see. But he also brought it out because the Sabbath day was one of their favorites because they didn't have to do anything. So Jesus was saying, you already like rest. You already like rest. Come to me. Come to me, and I will give you rest. But they defended it. You can't join to law and join to Christ. We have to join to Christ if we want a relationship. Come unto me was the invitation to anybody and to everybody. Because there is rest in Christ. I want to leave you with this, and I'm going to hush. I back up to Genesis chapter 6. I want you to think about this. If we look at the order of the Scripture, the order of the Bible, I believe things line up as they're supposed to for a purpose, for a reason. But if I take you back to Genesis chapter number 6, we would start reading about the flood of Noah. Everybody familiar with the flood of Noah? Just to be brief, when God looked down upon the earth, the sons of God, which were fallen angels, those that threw their lot in with Lucifer, they were interbreeding with, with the women, with mankind. What they were producing was giants. And the Bible says not just then, but later it happened again, and that's where they got Goliath. They were producing giants. When God looked down upon this picture, he said, it's not what I created. This is not what I created. He told Noah, because Noah found grace, which literally meant that he found unmerited favor. Grace in the New Testament, divine influence of the Holy Spirit. Grace in the Old Testament, because Jesus had not yet come, was unmerited favor. Noah didn't do anything to deserve the goodness of God. But the Lord told Noah, he said, Noah, Build an ark. Get your family in it. Get two of every kind of animal. Get in the ark. I'm going to flood the earth, and I'm going to wipe out everything that I have not created. The Bible literally says that when God looked upon the earth, the earth was corrupt. The world needs to take note of that today. God will not continue to look at total corruption. <laughs> when he looked, he said, Noah... Get in the boat. I'm going to flood the earth. Some 40 days it rained, but a total Bible scholars different of about, they'll differ a little bit, right at 365 days that they were in that ark waiting for the ground to dry up. And after they were able to land, Noah, and I'm going to extend this just a little, I'm going to go on just a little bit because I got a point I want to make. Noah came on dry ground. When he got on dry ground, they found him laying naked in a tent, drunk. I bring that out for a point. Everybody said, well, Noah did it. I could do it. That's not wise. That's not, well, that's, never mind. Here's what I want you to know. The ark is a type of Christ. If you look up ark here, or if you look up ark, when the mother of Moses placed him in the ark, not a basket, the Bible says ark, that was a type of Christ. The ark was a type of Christ. If you look up the word Noah, what does the name Noah mean? Noah literally means rest. 
If you were in that day and you wanted to find rest, you better go to the ark and get inside the ark, get inside of Christ because there's not rest anywhere else to be found. And then I want you to know this. When Noah got out of the ark, that's when he fell and that's when he uh, was completely, had completely blew it. If you want to continue to live for God, you better stay in the ark. You better stay in the ark. Look, as long as I keep my faith in Christ and what he did for me on the cross of Calvary. No, sir, I'm not a perfect man. I'll be the first one to tell you, I've still got things in my heart that needs to be changed. I've got to agree with the writer of Hebrews when he said, let us lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. That's something that we still need to be announcing today. But I want you to know, as long as I keep my faith in Christ and what He did for me on the cross, as long as I stay in the ark, I will find rest in my soul and I will remain in a relationship with Jesus Christ. The announcement was, come. And find rest. And here's what I want to tell you. And then I'll hush. I'm trying to hush, I promise. The first thing, the great revelation that we find in the Bible is that it would be by a blood sacrifice. The Lord said, the Lord, Genesis 3 and 21, I believe it is, where God made them skins, coats of the animals. He shed blood. That was the first great revelation that it would have to take a blood sacrifice to cover our sins. When Jesus came, that was his first mission, to lay down his life. Here's what we see next. The second great revelation is of Noah, Genesis chapter number 6. Not that there's not more, but Genesis chapter number 6, where he found rest in the ark. If I go back to the ministry of Christ, watch this. Jesus said, I came to seek and save. The Son of Man must be offered up. And then the first public announcement he gives in Matthew 11 is, come to me. And you'll find rest for your soul. My God. I I love that. I want to tell you this morning. Not only did Jesus die to save you. So that you would have eternal life. He died also to give you rest for your soul. He died to give you rest. All of you that labor and are heavy laden. Everybody trying to work for it. Everybody trying to earn it. Everybody trying self-efforts. Everybody trying self-work. I come to tell you this morning that if you come to Jesus, you will find rest for your soul this morning. Whether you're lost, whether you're broken, whether you're hurting, whether you're bound, whether your family is a mess, whether you're depressed, whether you're oppressed, I don't care this morning, and I don't mean that in an unkind way. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Everybody, anybody, and everybody that will come to Jesus, you shall find rest for your soul. Would you stand with me this morning? Come on, sing it. Jump into it if you can. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. When you're running on empty and you can't find that remedy, just come to the way. Come on, worship this morning. Spend your whole life. Hallelujah. Chasing what's missing. That's so true. But that empty inside, it just ain't gonna listen. Nothing can satisfy. And the world, it leaves you high and dry. Just come to the wind. Come on, sing it, son. And all who thirst will thirst. No more. no more, hallelujah. And all who search will, will find. find what their souls so long for. The world will try, but it can never fail. So leave it all behind and come to the way. Sing that verse again. 
Listen to the words of this. You can spend your whole life chasing what's missing. Think about it this morning. But that empty inside, it just ain't gonna listen. Only one thing that'll fill that void. When nothing can satisfy in the world that leaves you high and dry. Just come to the will. Think about it. And all who thirst will, will thirst no more. And all who search will, they will find, find you shall what find. Their souls long for. Hallelujah. The world will try, but it can Amen. never fill. So leave it all behind. And come to the well. Hallelujah. Here's my altar call this morning as he's playing softly. Some of you are visitors, and I don't know you this morning. Some of you are home folk, and to be honest, in regards to the condition of your heart, I don't know you either. Because only the Lord knows the deep things of our heart. But this morning I felt led in my spirit to minister, to preach the invitation to come unto me and find rest. Come unto Jesus and find rest. I want to tell you this morning, I don't know what struggle may be going on in your heart. I don't know what struggle or what lies the devil may have told you in your mind. But I come to tell you this morning, to the hurting, come and find rest. To the broken, come and find rest. To the lost, come and find rest. To the depressed, come and find rest in Jesus. Uh, I want you to know you're not taking a chance. It's not a baby. It's not, a, it's not something that may or may not happen. Jesus said, if you will come, you shall find rest in your soul. So I just want to open up the altars this morning. Bring somebody with you. Grab whoever's sitting beside you. Grab them by the hand. Say, come on. I want you to pray with me. But our prayer this morning is to simply find us ourselves and say, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm having a struggle in my heart. Tell him whatever the struggle is. And say this morning, I place my faith in you and what you've already done for me on the cross. By faith, I give it to you. And I'm asking you to help me. Let me be coupled with you. Let me take your burden. Uh, this morning and continue to be joined with you. Uh, this morning, that's my altar call. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's life itself. Maybe it's an issue. Maybe it's a family problem. Uh, but the invitation stands. Come and find rest this morning. Uh, come and find rest this morning. Uh, come and find peace this morning. Uh, come and be refreshed this morning. Uh, come to the lost Come to the broken. Come to those that are thirsty. Come this morning and let the Lord do a work in your heart and in your life. Come on, would you come? Grab somebody. Bring them with you to an altar. This is our prayer time. Come on and pray with somebody. Let's spend some time calling out to the Lord this morning. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Come on, would you help me? Find somebody. Pray with so them. Bring me your heart. I need some help this morning. No matter how broken Pray with somebody Just come as you are When your last prayer is spoken Hallelujah Just rest in his arms Come on, there's still time Come on and pray and this morning the change, my child. Pray where you're at It doesn't matter, but it's a good time to pray will. God, thank you for the rest God, Hallelujah to the Lamb of God will, no, no more, more. Come on, let the Lord do a work in your life this morning. Hallelujah. Let him do something in your heart you've been wanting this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The world will try. The world will try. But it can never fail. So leave it all behind. And come to the way. You can spend your whole life chasing what's missing, but that empty inside, it just ain't gonna listen. And nothing can satisfy in the world that leaves you high and dry. Just come to the well, and all who thirst will thirst. And all who search will find what their souls long for. The world will try, but it can never fill. So leave it all behind.
heart and come to the well. So bring me your heart. Come on, just worship this morning. No matter how. Come on, just worship this morning. Just come Hallelujah. as you are. When your last prayer is spoken. Just rest in his arms a while And you'll feel the change, my child When you've come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find What their souls long for The world will try but it can never fail So leave it all behind And come to the well And now that you're full Of love beyond measure Come on, this worship is a minute flow like, like a stream, stream in the desert Hallelujah. And soon all the world will see that living water is found in me. Hallelujah. Because you've come to the way. Come on, son, minister. To and all who thirst will thirst no more. No more. And, and all, all who search, search will find what their souls long for. Hallelujah. The world will try. But it can never fail So leave it all behind Come on, do that chorus And come, come to the wind And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find What their souls long for Hallelujah The world will try but it can never fail So leave it all behind Hallelujah And come to the way Praise the Lord Aren't leave you thankful for that way? And come to the way Hallelujah Praise the Lord Jesus sat on the side of a well with a woman And told her Said I've got water to drink of And you will never thirst again Praise the Lord. Thank God for that living water. Amen. Well, I pray this morning that those that, uh, that had came by faith, that you find rest for your soul, and I know that you will. It's a promise given for the Lord. Keep your faith in Christ. Stay in the ark. Stay in the boat. That's where you want to be. And let the Lord continue to rest you and refresh you. Amen and amen. Don't forget prayer meeting is at 430 service. Is at 5 o'clock. Again, we want to say thank you to everybody for coming this morning. We trust you were blessed. We trust that we pointed you to Christ as, a, as an individual God, a relationship with him. And we just, we just hope you have a great afternoon and hope to see you back this afternoon ready to receive from the Lord again this evening. Amen? Amen. If you'll bow your heads, Brother Greg, would you pray and dismiss the service?